It's time to mind your business with Howard Schwartz from the Connecticut Better Business Bureau. And this morning we are talking about robocalls. Pre-recorded messages are often used for marketing and even scams. Most robocalls are illegal and certainly they are annoying. So I guess, Howard, first and foremost, let's talk about what would the textbook definition be when we talk about robocalls? Well, aside from the word annoying, <laughs> yeah. it's um, a pre-recorded message and uh, they're pitching something, you don't always know what, but they can connect you to a so-called customer service agent. The people who are calling you uh, who do this are often ignoring the do not call list. And people have been built out of millions and millions of dollars, for example, from Rachel, from Cardholder Services, uh, saying that they can lower your interest rates when, of course, if you give them your credit card or anything else, they won't do anything for you. Now, are the robocalls themselves <laughs> illegal? There are some exceptions to the rule. Okay. Uh, if you haven't done business with a company or you haven't opted out, those are illegal. But if it's of a purely informational uh, interest, then you've got, uh, for example, that there'll be a delayed school opening, or if you agree with your, okay. your pharmacist or your doctor to tell you about an appointment. But there are three categories that are somewhat worried, uh, worrying because one of them uh, has to do with uh, public opinion pollsters, but politicians and charities try and raise money uh, that way. And the problem is you don't know who you're giving your credit card to on the other side of the phone. Right. It's it's very difficult to figure out what's legitimate and what's not. Um, I'm sure that, you know, law enforcement obviously has their eyes open and, you know, their ears open, too, to figure out what's going on. But what are the challenges in really shutting down what are the illegal operations or the robocalls? Well, one of the problems is landlines involve archaic technology. So okay. there's not much that can be done, but they have been developing call blocking technology. So, for example, people who get their telephone over the internet, perhaps from their internet provider, there is a system where incoming calls are compared to a known blacklist of bad numbers, and it'll ring once, and then you decide whether or not you want to pick it up. Hmm. So, hopefully, within the next few years, it'll get even better. And, you know, with that, has have we seen any significant progress in, in shutting them down? I mean, obviously, we can say, hey, we're going to block it and use that technology, but what about shutting down the operations altogether? That's a great question because in combination with other countries and the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission, for example, uh, we spoke in November about a raid on a call center in Mumbai, right. India. 20 people were arrested, the servers were taken away, and in the days following that, complaints to Better Business Bureau's scam tracker fell 95 percent. Hmm. And in the latest action, there was a $280 million civil penalty against Dish Network for ignoring the okay. Do Not Call List, and that was an historic amount of money. Let's talk a little bit about what we can do to put a dent in these robocalls. You have a couple of tips here about how to deal with them. You know, the first being don't pick up. That's a tough one for a lot of people, but if you don't know the number, let it go to voicemail because you can't always rely on uh, caller ID. Yeah, that is true. And how about don't press your telephone keypad? This is interesting. They'll encourage you to press one to speak to a customer service agent or two to be taken off the list. If mm -hmm. you press either of those, then you're put on a sucker's list and you can expect more calls. What about contacting your provider? You can contact your provider to see if they can block calls. They'll often give you call blocking for a few months. Um, worst case scenario, you may have to change your phone number. It's a problem, but you sometimes can get a break on that or not have to pay anything to your provider. And, you know, that goes with the next tip, block with your smartphone. Yes, there are apps that you can use to do that, but also smartphone technology will allow you in, in many cases to block a specific number. It's a cat and mouse game, though, because those numbers can change. So really, it's about, you know, checking with the new technology and making sure that we're doing everything that we can do to stop them from coming in. Correct. And when you're checking new technology and it's all over the Internet, Make sure it's good. Maybe put mm -hmm. the name of the, of the uh, device on Google and put the word problems after or scam mm -hmm. and see what people say about it. All right. Howard, thanks so much. We have all those tips again on our website just in case you missed all of them. Thanks so much. My pleasure.